In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up IAM based authentication to sign in to your Aurora serverless V2 database that's using Postgres. Uh, so I'm going to walk you through all the steps that you need to run through in order to get this set up. Uh, but this did take me quite a while the first time to figure out. So hopefully I can make this easier for some of you guys trying to do this. Now there are a sequence of things that we need to run through to make this work correctly. We're going to be connecting with PG admin, but you can also connect with, you know, PSQL or some other kind of uh, IDE to connect to your database as well, as long as you follow all the steps. Uh, so like you can see here, we have a couple things to do. The first step is we need to configure our database. Um, we need to enable RDS IAM access and not just password access or else this, this won't work right out of the gate. And in my case, I also have public access. So I have network connectivity to my database. Uh, if you're running this in a VPC, then you may need to use some kind of jump box and uh, SSH tunneling uh, to get access to it. Now, the next step is that we need to create a IAM user and a specific policy that's gonna be associated with this database that I have right here, which is an Aurora serverless V2 database. Then after we do that, we, um, kind of a 2B step is we need to go into our database and create the corresponding role. So if we name a user John Smith, then we need to go into our database and create a user called John Smith as well. The next thing is you need to set up a certificate and the certificate is just a step you need to do um, to enable TLS over your connection or on your connection rather. And it's just a security thing. And unfortunately, if you don't do this step, your connection isn't going to work. So it's kind of mandatory. And then from there, all you need to do is just run a AWS CLI command to generate an authentication token. That token is going to last for up to 15 minutes. Then you go into PG admin and you just use your username and you use the token as your password and then you have a session. So it's a great alternative to having to issue passwords directly to your users through PG admin or through your Postgres database. All of this gets kind of self-contained. So that was the intro. Uh, so let's start walking through the steps here. So the first thing we need to do is confirm that we have IAM authentication enabled. So I'm just going to click on my cluster here and go to modify. And the setting should be a little bit lower here for database authentication. So confirm that you have password and IAM database authentication selected. So once you did that, you can kind of exit back out of here and go back. All right, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to create a IAM policy that has a specific action associated with it. And I just have it off screen here as a JSON blob because uh, we're going to go create the policy in a second here. So as you can kind of see, um, we're doing effect allow rds-db colon connect. And I have a kind of question mark thing here for the resource. And I did that on purpose because it's kind of a weird format that you need to put in here. And here's the format that we're going to be filling up. So it's this ARN colon AWS colon RDS dash DB. This is all hard coded. And then you want your region. So mine is going to be US East one. Then you want your account number. Your account number is right up here. In my case, it's this thing. And then you want colon DB user. Now this is fixed. This doesn't actually mean anything. This is just a constant. So uh, yours needs to say DB user as well. And then colon cluster resource. The cluster resource is something I'll show you how to find in the console here. It's not this name. This is where I, I screwed up. It's not database dash one or whatever you name your cluster. Uh, it's a specific um, parameter in the configuration and then the username. So the username will be like John Doe or Michael Smith or Michael Scott, whatever, the, whatever you want that to be. So let me show you how to find that cluster resource really quick um, before we, we fill out, fill this out and generate the policy. So just go into your database and go to, I believe it's under configuration and it's right here. So resource ID, it's cluster dash this thing. If you don't do this correctly, then you're going to have some vague, ambiguous errors going to give you a headache later. So just keep that in mind. Copy this to your clipboard for later because, um, well, right now, actually, because we're going to need to construct the policy. Uh, so back here, so this is the format. And by the way, I'll make all these notes, including the IAM policy and all the commands that I'm running available to you uh, in the description section of this video. So don't worry about typing any of this stuff out. It's all going to be available. Um, so in my case, I actually have it on the side here of what I'm going to do. So this is what mine looks like. And so you can see here, uh, I have US East one, I have the account number, DB user stays the same. I have that cluster identifier that I just showed you. And then I have slash Michael Scott. Michael Scott's gonna be the, the name of the username um, that we configure in IAM and our database. 
So I'm just going to copy this and swap this out and make sure you put this in quotes. And that looks good. I'm just going to copy this to my clipboard now. Okay, cool. So we don't need to do anything in here. I think for the rest of the video, actually we may need to. So I'm just going to duplicate tabs and we are going to go over to the IAM section and we are going to create a username called Michael underscore Scott and a policy of kind of what I just showed you. So you're going to go to users and you're going to go to add users and we're going to give it username. Uh, that's not what I want. Sorry, just Michael underscore Scott. Uh, you can enable, uh, we're going to need programmatic access for sure, actually, because we need to configure the AWS CLI. Uh, we're going to go to permissions and we're going to say attach existing policies directly. Is there a create policy here? I don't see one. Uh, so we have to do that. And oh, there's create policy. It's going to open up a new tab here. So let's create it really quick. We're going to do it through JSON and let's just dump this in here. And this should be formatted. It's not giving us a warning. Everything at first glance looks good. Uh, next for tags, next for review. Um, you can name this whatever you want. So Michael Scott's RDS policy. And one thing that uh, I didn't mention is that um, for this policy, like I'm applying it to a specific cluster and a specific user, you can also use wildcards in here. So if you want to give Michael Scott access to all clusters, you just put a, a star in. And if you want to create a policy where you're giving permission to all users and all clusters, then you can put star star. So something like this. But um, you want to use the, the least privilege permission model. So be as specific as you can when it makes sense. Uh, so I'm going to leave it just like this. All right. So going back to our policy, this is the policy. It's looking good. Full access, create policy. Should take a second or so, uh, but hopefully nothing long. There we go. So the policy has been created. You can close this tab now because it just created it for us. Going to refresh this section and we should now see the Michael Scott policy. And just type in the filter for Michael and there you go. So we're going to click on that and next tags, next review and create user. And now we have our access key and our secret access key. Okay, perfect. So everything is, is going well. So what I want to do now is just very quickly configure our CLI with this access key and this secret access key. Don't bother trying to copy and paste this stuff out of the uh, video here because I'm going to delete this stuff right after. Um, so we're going to say AWS configure. We're going to paste this in. We're going to get the secret access key. We're going to paste that in. Okay. And default region, US East 1. Make sure to set this to whatever region you're going to use here. Default output format. Okay, we're done. So we don't need to do anything else now, uh, at least for this step. Okay, so we're almost halfway there. So what I want to do now is I need to connect to our database using the default username and default password. And like kind of the master username, master password, and create the user for Michael Scott. Because not only do you need to have an IAM user with this name, you need to have an internal Postgres database user. And I believe the MySQL flow uses pretty much the same thing. Uh, so in my case, my database, uh, the one that I created previously, this one here, was uh, set up to use a, a default Postgres username and, and just the password was password or something like that. Uh, so I need to get the connection string so we can go into PG admin uh, and connect to it. So let's find that. Um, so that's the writer instance. I actually want the instance um, endpoint. There it is. So it's right here under connectivity and security. There's your instance endpoint. So launch up PG admin or PSQL or whatever you want to use. And we need to create a connection here. So in my case, uh, I'm going to right click that, go to new server. And let's just name this um, like master because we're going to have another connection here later for uh, Michael Scott that we're going to be using. Okay, so that's that. Um, go to connection, paste in our um, endpoint there. And like I said, my username was Postgres. My password was uh, just password. And you don't need to use SSL at this point because um, RDS IAM enforces SSL, not, not this way. Um, so you can connect without it. So if you just click on save now, uh, we should, you know, you can see my database here. It's got a demo database in it. I don't even think there's any data, but that doesn't really matter anyways. Okay, cool. So let's create a query and you need to run 
two very specific commands. And the first one is to create that user. So I'm just gonna paste it in here so you can see. So create user Michael Scott. Uh, let's run that really quick. And then the second thing is that we need to grant RDS IAM access to this user. So I'm also gonna paste this in. And similarly, I'll make these notes available to you too. Uh, this should say grant RDS IAM to Michael Scott. And then you can click that and you see everything ran successfully. I found this really cool command that you can use to kind of list all the usernames for you. Uh, I'll make this available too. So we, this is just a confirmation step. I don't even know what any of this is. It's just like some uh, interesting SQL command. So uh, you can just run that and you can see um, we have John Smith. This is what I was experimenting with earlier. And now we have Michael Scott as well, in addition to just our default stuff. Another optional step is to grant additional permissions to your user in Postgres, such as querying or creating a table. This is kind of a quirk with IAM and Postgres. Access control is still managed on the user within Postgres and not via IAM. IAM just handles the connection or authentication part of this flow. Something to keep in mind. So everything is working correctly here. Um, so that's all we need to do at this point. Uh, let's just remove this panel so we don't have this stuff to, um, to work with later. Now what we need to do before we can proceed with trying to generate our auth token and trying to use that uh, Michael Scott user to connect to this database, what we need to do is get a certificate file that we use for our connection. Because when we connect with John Smith, or sorry, Michael Scott, we need to provide that SSL certificate. So in order to get that, you need to go to this URL here. So it's like I'll put this in the description, but uh, it's basically this URL, which is for using SSL and TLS to encrypt a connection to a DB cluster. Uh, so you need this in this case using RDS IAM access. So you can go down here to certificate bundles for AWS region and download the specific one. So I'm in US East uh, one, so I can download this one. Uh, alternatively, a much better way is you can just download the global. Uh, so to get a certificate bundle that contains both the intermediate and root certificates for all AWS regions, download from here. So just download this and save this to a temporary directory because we're gonna need this uh, to connect to our database using RDS IAM. Um, so I'll put this link again in the show notes as well. So let's go back here. And I think we're basically good to go to generate our token now. And the token is gonna to require a bunch of different parameters and that's gonna act as our password. And we're gonna generate that token through the, um, just a command here uh, with the AWS CLI. So I'm just gonna grab the command over here on my clipboard and drop it in and explain it to you as it appears. So just paste that in. Okay, so here is the command. So it's AWS RDS generate dash DB dash auth dash token. Then you need to give it the host name. So the dash dash host name flag, and then the uh, URL of your host, host name or your endpoint, which is basically the thing right here. Then you need to say the port number. By default, it's 5432, but if you specified something else in your creation step, then you need to change this here the region that you want to act in, and the username that you want to generate this token for. So you need to do this every time that you want to connect to your database through PG admin or um, you know, MySQL dashboard, whatever it is. Uh, so you probably should create an alias for this command if you're going to be running it a lot. Um, but for my case, it's just a one-time thing. So let's just press enter here and see what happens. Um, so you can see we get this giant, it doesn't really look like a password. It's just kind of a, an encoded string. And I just copied it to my clipboard. You don't really, you can take a look at this. There's just interesting things in here. Uh, it's just a SIG v4 signed uh, token. And we're going to use this for our password to connect to our database. So uh, let's go do that now. I'm going to bring up PG admin again. And let's create a new server with a new connection for Michael Scott. So we're going to go to crates and server. And let's just call this uh, Michael Scott. And we're going to go to connection. Let's actually, I already have this uh, from before, but this is the same endpoint that's over here. And for username, you want to put in Michael underscore Scott, paste in your password, which is what we just got from, from right here. And then you want to go to SSL and you want to change the SSL mode from prefer to verify dash full. And then for root certificate, you want to navigate to that uh, PEM file that you just downloaded uh, for the certificate. So I put mine over here, my temp directory. So mine is called global.bundle.pem and a global dash bundle and click on select now. 
and the connection looks good. Everything is filled out. Seems like this is right. So if I click save now, it should test the connection. Let's hope that everything is working correctly. Uh, and perfect. So we didn't get any error. Um, and so let's see what, if we can run like any kind of query here. So actually we need to go in here, go to demo database, uh, query tool. I think I have like a company table in here, which um, should have some data in. So select star from company, I think it's called. Um, if not, we'll try something else. Oh, permission denied. So the reason this is showing denied is because I didn't grant Michael Scott any additional permissions. So by default, he doesn't have any query or create, read, or update permissions. So you need to do that through Postgres if you want to add them. So that's how to set this up and to sign in as an IEM user using PGAdmin. Let me know what you think of this video and thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.